Hello and welcome to Views on News. I am Jawad Tehami. We are continuously following the situation that is unfolding in the Gaza Strip as the Israeli aggression with relentless bombardment targeting the civilians and the civilian infrastructure continues. The United Nations says over 1,200 people uh, in the Gaza Strip have been killed, with 338,000 have been displaced. Now, uh, this particular aggression has been termed by dozens of UN experts as a collective punishment, and uh, Israel's complete blockade had earlier been condemned by international organizations, terming it a war crime. On the other side, what we have seen is that Israel's energy minister says nobody should preach us morals as there would be no exceptions to the siege without freedom for Israeli hostages. Now, uh, we have also seen in a major development, United States Secretary of State, uh, Mr. Antony Blinken, is on his visit to Israel and he has assured uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of the unwavering uh, U.S. support regarding this particular conflict in particular. Also, uh, when he was um, having a departure from the United States for this uh, visit of Israel, he told reporters that the U.S. has Israel's back. In another major development, we have seen the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Iranian President Mr. Ibrahim Raisi in their first direct communication after the restoration of their diplomatic ties earlier uh, shared, uh, expressed the shared concern regarding the welfare of the Palestinian people. Uh, also, Russian President Mr. Vladimir Putin has urged the warring sides to turn to negotiations and has also offered mediation. On the other side, uh, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation has strongly condemned Israeli aggression against the Palestinians, urging the international community to stop Israel. Likewise, Pakistan's Foreign Office has strongly condemned Israel's indiscriminate and disproportionate use of force against the innocent Palestinians. In another major development, Brazil, uh, which holds the rotating presidency of the United Nations Security Council, has called another meeting of the Council on Friday. Now, when we uh, specifically talk about the situation that has already turned into a dire humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip with this naked Israeli aggression, why do we call it a strip and how much population density do we see over there in the Gaza Strip? Uh, by looking uh, at this particular map, which has been acquired by another leading media organization, Al Jazeera, as you can see on your TV screens, as far as the width of this particular strip, it actually uh, looks like a strip and the uh, width which is uh, uh, 10 kilometers, 6 miles, as you can see from the northern side, and 41 kilometers in length uh, from the uh, side of the sea. Uh, it has been divided into five major portions. Up in the north is North Gaza, where population happens to be 430,000. Then comes the second part, which is known as Gaza City, which holds a population of 731,000. And uh, in the middle is the third part, Deir al Bala, with a population of 310,000. With the fourth part, uh, somewhere in the south is Khan Yunus, with a population of 426,000. In the southernmost part is Rafa, uh, the fifth part, uh, the population of which is 267,000. In total, the population in this particular area, the area is 365 square kilometers with a population of 2.1 million here in this very narrow strip which has been besieged by the Israeli forces for the last consecutive uh, 16 days. The history of usurpation of the land encroachment and building uh, the settlements over there you know, with the passage of time, no matter Israeli authorities reaching so many agreements with the Palestinians regarding the resolution of this conflict, but they had been backing away from whatever the agreement they made with the Palestinians. And Palestinians suffer 
and uh, the kind of uh, propaganda regarding the incursion, one of the deadliest and uh, most effective incursion, the Palestinian resistance group Hamas uh, carried out on Saturday. Now, the Western world um, uh, seems to be supporting Israel uh, for the kind of incursion Hamas has made with uh, many Muslim countries trying to resolve this situation and de-escalate this situation through negotiations. Let's talk about the kind of misery and the suffering uh, the uh, innocent Gazans are facing because of this naked Israeli aggression. Uh, we are honored to have been joined in the studio by Mr. Naveed Aman Khan. He's senior analyst. Uh, Mr. Naveed, thank you very much for your time for being with us on the show tonight. Really appreciate that. Also in the studio, we are honored to have been joined by Brigadier Retired Masood Ahmed Khan. He's senior analyst. Brigadier Masood, thank you very much for your time also for being with us on Views on News tonight. Really appreciate that. Let me begin the discussion with you, Mr. Naveed. Now, uh, starting with this very uh, statement that has come from Israel's energy minister, as they had already announced a complete blockade of Gaza, which has been termed as a war crime, a crime against humanity by major international organizations, including the WHO, including the Human Rights Watch. Let me uh, quote this uh, uh, particular statement by the energy minister he says that humanitarian aid to gaza question mark and goes on to say no electrical switch will be lifted no water hydrant will be opened and no fuel truck will enter until israeli hostages are returned home humanitarian for humanitarian and nobody should preach us morals unquote now looking at this last part of this statement what's your analysis uh, jawad in fact uh, in uh, this statement uh, we can find uh, an offer of uh, siege or an offer of uh, ceasefire. Uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, if uh, the uh, Israeli minister has demanded uh, uh, um, uh, the Israelis re release of the on those uh, Israelis captured by Hamas, it means that uh, there should be a negotiation between two group, uh, two parties, the Hamas and uh, the uh, Israel, on the the uh, ceasefire and uh, on the settlement of the issues. Uh, once the um, uh, Israelis are released by Hamas, the uh, captured uh, 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 Palestinians should also be released by Israel e equally. No, uh, do you, uh, what I understand from your take is, uh, do you think it's a goodwill gesture on part of uh, Israel? There I mean, were negotiations on one side. Uh, there is a clear asymmetry regarding this particular equation. If we talk about if Hamas has taken hostages, Hamas is not killing those hostages. On the other side, we see Israeli forces indiscriminately with the disproportionate use of force are bombarding relentlessly the Gazans who are being killed daily. Now, so far, 1,200 people have been killed and over 338,000 have been displayed, placed uh, with this particular fear. Jawad, uh, ultimately, we will have to come on the negotiation table for the end of this war. Uh, though five, five days back it has started, but it has started uh, uh, in a very destructive manner, very, very um, 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 fatal and uh, you know, brutal attacks from Israel to Gaza or the Palestinian side. Uh, if the international powers, international community doesn't intervene at this stage, I don't think uh, it will uh, uh, find any uh, close solution um, 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 uh, within days or within, within weeks. It will last for, for months and years. And now the international community will have to intervene by all means to end it and find the solution of uh, this issue. Uh, no matter it is the uh, exchange of uh, those uh, uh, um, uh, hostages by both of the part, uh, uh, parties, uh, the, uh, the Palestine, Pal Palestine or the Israel. Uh, we need to find a good positive aspect out of this statement. Though in, it is not uh, their intention to, um, uh, to, uh, to give you the uh, you know, uh, goodwill gesture, but we need to find that goodwill gesture from this statement and we need to go ahead for, for the solution of the issue. Uh, right, uh, Brigadier Masood, what's your understanding regarding this uh, statement when we uh, try to analyze uh, this particular last part of this statement, nobody should be preaching us morals. What does that actually depict? What sort of mindset is at play uh, behind this particular statement? That is simply threatening. The message is very clear and according to uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, they will go to the lost limits 
until they get or obtain their objectives, there will be no ceasefire, there will be no talks at all. That is the destruction of maximum of uh, Gaza Strip, the enclave, and subsequently this is basically a threat. And Prime Minister has said that he will go ahead with this uh, uh, aerial bombardment, even if we, uh, we kill those uh, host, uh, the prisoners of war taken by the Hamas. So they are determined and they are, they are adamant to go for the loss limits to destroy the maximum destruction if they can create within the Gaza Strip. The ultimate aim is the destruction. But at the same time, it is not possible. There is no message of uh, any ceasefire, any compromise between the gr uh, groups. Despite the fact uh, of the the Muslim countries, they are trying to uh, make some headway. Now, uh, 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 now, the situation, if we look at the statements, as yeah. you have already mentioned, yeah. the kind of statement which came uh, from Israeli Prime Minister yeah. Benjamin Netanyahu, and this kind of a statement, which is uh, you deem, uh, uh, think is uh, a threatening one yeah. by the Israel's energy minister. A uh, couple of days before on the third day of the incursion, Hamas spokesperson also gave a statement. Uh, he also threatened to kill uh, one hostage for every single bombardment on any home in Gaza Strip without any warning. So uh, do you think the situation is going towards a complete deadlock between the two? Uh, C certainly, factions? certainly it is going to go complete deadlock. As I said, unless they get their objectives, that is the objective. objective to Hamas or no, the Israeli regime? Israelis, Israelis, they will go for the maximum destruction, maximum killings through aerial bombardment, uh, it will take weeks or months and subsequently they will go for ground invasion after that. Because the ground invasions are basically, it is a costly affair. One has to clear a, a, a house to house search and then they have to clear. So that is very costly and the Hamas will not let uh, a free run to, they will not give a free run to the Israeli defense forces inside Gaza. Uh, imagine 2.3 million but still there are people, they are fighting. So they will go to loss limits. It will not be easy, uh, easy for uh, the Israeli forces to enter in Gaza and go for the search or operations because they will also uh, uh, be afraid of the hot pursuit of uh, Hamas uh, and uh, they, they, they will also be targeted in the streets of uh, Gaza if they enter and uh, it, it will be you know, a very, very fatal uh, situation. Uh, right, Bikadi Masood, now, uh, uh, the ground invasion, yeah. uh, the likelihood of that. Now, we already know that uh, around 300,000 reservists are standing uh, on the Israeli Gaza border. Yeah. So, the likelihood of that? Certainly, they will, but in not in the near future. As I said, it, they will, it will take weeks or months, and subsequently, they will try to enter into Gaza. They may uh, capture Gaza Strip at, at once, maybe in a couple of months or three months, four months. But they are going. They will not. They will not be in a position to dominate Gaza Strip as such because of the the size of population, the determination of the Hamas and also of the Islamic Jihad. So basically, it is the violation of human rights. Basically, look the threatening. Nobody has condemned the Israeli engineer, energy minister. Look at the West. Their hypocrisy. Their double standards. It is only the Muslim countries, there were a couple of them, they have uh, basically condemned these. Uh, then they are talking of uh, a humanitarian corridor to, to be created. Uh, uh, recently, Egypt has taken a stand that a corridor to be created and they said that they will facilitate entry into Rafah from the Sinai Peninsula. So things will unfold. Saudi so Arabia, yeah. Iran have also... Now, I'll come know. to this uh, point. Uh, let me just take Brigadier Massoud's uh, understanding of this particular incursion by Hamas on Saturday. Uh, the uh, world knows the kind of uh, military might Israeli regime has got, the kind of defense yeah. system it so uh, highly talks about. Uh, and the kind of intelligence apparatus it has put in place. Despite all those things, how do you think Hamas could um, carry out uh, such an incursion which could be effective and inflict such a damage to Israel? It is something unprecedented and unbelievable. A wreck take Malaysia, taking the Israeli defense forces, considered formidable, invincible. But they were taken by surprise on 7th October, 
attacking Israel through land, sea and ground troops and subsequently the world has seen it was a colossal intelligence failure at the part of the Israeli defense, uh, Israeli government. And also there are three services, uh, despite the fact beside Mossad, Sabat and then Amman, there are three agencies that are working for the intelligence. But despite the fact, even the United, uh, the United States, they were unable to detect the preparations they were taken. So it, it was not a spontaneous action. They took uh, pro probably months in planning and uh, for the execution of this operation. So it was firstly, it was a intelligence failure, colossal intelligence failure. Second, it also tested the so-called Iron Dome, the concept, they totally failed and it was precisely it was basically was created uh, to counter likely rocket attack from Palestinians as well as from Hezbollah. So that was breach. And thirdly, the, the, the wall which was constructed by spending $1 billion, that was breached by the seized Hamas people by using the bulldozers. So the world is shocked. And at the message which has been given to the international community, now the think tank across the globe, they are thinking a new dimension, a new military doctrine has been now been introduced. A ragtag militia, they have breached and they have basically taken the Israeli defensive forces to toss and their myth has finally exposed and that has been shattered. Now Netanyahu is trying to reclaim that glory the so-called glory which they had and they, that's why he is trying, he is, not, he is not talking of any talks or discussions with any group. He said he will go to last limits to, uh, to get his objective, that is the destruction of uh, uh, Palestinians in Gaza Strip, even where they will go for the West Bank also subsequently. Right, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Naveed, I was sure understand when, when we uh, analyze these statements from both the sides, uh, do you understand the situation is heading towards a complete deadlock and yes. what's the way forward? For yes, that? it is uh, um, um, moving towards the deadlock, but uh, we cannot find way out with, within the deadlock. We will have to find out uh, in, uh, the way we uh, so, uh, solve this issue. The solution of this issue is, uh, you know, uh, two nation theory. If Israel is uh, existing there in its territory and has the right to exist there peacefully, uh, Palestinians have also the right to ha have their ter territory in, uh, within themselves and have the right to exist there in their land. Uh, unless Israel and the international community give this way to the Palestinians, we cannot find peace in the uh, Middle East in, in that region. So uh, we need to have find uh, or we need to have way out. Uh, the international community, the uh, America, uh, uh, Russia, Saudi, Turkey, Iran, uh, China uh, will have to come forward immediately. We need not to wait for it. We need to come out and uh, we need to uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, find that way of uh, negotiations and settlement of this issue immediately, otherwise we will face the, a big human tragedy in uh, Middle East. Let me uh, go to Brigadier Masood now. Brigadier Masood, you already mentioned the intelligence yeah. uh, failure. Uh, the kind of uh, success Hamas uh, apparently uh, got after this particular incursion, uh, after which you uh, think there could be uh, a new military doctrine yeah, exactly. coming in. Now, um, they launched a successful incursion uh, do, you, uh, do you think they didn't calculate the repercussions of it? What sort of a reaction would be from the Israeli side? We've already seen Israel has waged four uh, wars against, uh, specifically the Gaza Strip, yeah. from 2008 to 9, 2012 and 14 again, and then in 2021. This is the fifth time. So don't you think Hamas would have calculated the kind of repercussions that would ha uh, be for the Gazans? As you said, there are four wars. And one war was for 51 days. Probably it was uh, 2008, 9, I don't know. So 2014, 20, it lasted for 50 days. Yes, 50 days. So they have the potentials and capability to fight out this uh, war for so early for 30 days, 40 days. And basically for a, a group like Hamas, basically it is a sort of a guerrilla warfare for them. So they can sustain uh, themselves and they under they they must have calculated the repercussions the uh, the results 
so basically it was in a suicidal attack a fidayin attack across when they went across inside israel so knowing fully well as, as i was um, hearing there are news that those some of those they have been killed inside the israel while while during the landing and during their operations by the settlers and the israel defense forces but the message they carried and they have created this message they know the the, the force which has representing palestinian is hamas not al fata so in whenever in future there will be talks it will be hamas representing palestinians so that is very important and uh, it is had said basically it is operationally it is a success for them irrespective of whether no no there are setbacks for them no but at overall the internationally they had been recognized a force which has achieved operational success in a short duration of time and that was the first and second day so uh, they will continue with their struggle and they will hit and run tactics they will continue with that but yes, i think uh, jawad uh, for the first time uh, hamas or the palestine has brought uh, israel on the negotiation table because of that that attack on saturday uh, otherwise in past uh, always uh, israel have been attacking israel and israel uh, sorry uh, palestine and palestine or hamas have always been uh, in a defensive mode uh, not in the position of negotiations or uh, you know settlement now uh, israel is in uh, the conditions to come up on the table and settle the things uh though it is very fatal uh, situation if it is not controlled in days or immediately um, many many uh, casualties we will find uh, you know in uh, palestine in particular so uh, mr nabi uh, there has been a development the first direct communication between uh, the saudi crown prince mohammed bin salman and uh, iranian president mr ibrahim raisi uh, after the restoration of their diplomatic ties both have Uh, express this shared concern regarding whatever is happening to the innocent people uh, in Gaza uh, how big a step do you think uh, it is regarding addressing this situation that is unfolding it there? is very important very very important move by the um, iranian president uh, um, um, uh, talking to mbs uh, on this issue Uh, i think both of the parts um, saudi arabia and iran can make a difference and bring the uh, uh the, the both of the parties on the table uh because both are the um, very very both have very strong countries uh, if we talk about the middle east or the muslim world so uh, saudi arabia has its own influence on middle east iran has its own influence so both the countries can uh, can use the influence on the middle eastern countries and bring uh, uh, so, uh, is israel or uh, uh, hamas on the negotiation table unless they play their uh, important role for this we cannot find any way out because uh, the stakes are uh, m- more closer to the muslim world uh, america is not going to play that role america has sent its you know um, aircraft carrier Uh, america has not initiated uh, or uh, offered that set, uh, uh, mediation but uh, um, the muslim world saudi arabia iran and the other countries they have started uh, to play their role for mediation so it is making the difference right but getting to how big a development this particular direct negotiation uh, the talk between uh, iranian president and uh, saudi crown prince happens to be and what likely do you think it might have uh, on Uh, this particular conflict. certainly there is a very positive development because they have previously we s- we noted one of the uh, comments made by the uh, president ibrahim raisi and he was uh, showing his concern of uh, uh, the uh, saudis having uh, going for the normalization their relation with the, uh, israel and which was being sponsored by the americans so that is also a setback for the americans because they were trying to get achieve their political gains through normalizing and they were trying to show at uh, their foreign policy achievement for the next elections so they felt so now it was the time and then saudi arabia saudi arab declared there is unending of this uh, process so that was the point uh, the iranians they have uh, the, seized the opportunity and they have uh, done the discussion but i think the important role which is going to be be played in the middle east is the, either is the qatar and egypt and turkey they can play the important role because they have pre- they have relations with the egypts uh, with the israelis at the same time they have the past record of mediating the, of 
uh, different so issues in the Middle East. So let's see, although is, uh, Saudi Arab has the stakes in the Middle East, but these three countries, they have the experience and they have influence over Saudi Israel. Saudi yeah. can play a very important role because, you know, uh, so Saudi Arabia wants to have a uh, normal relationship with Israel. And uh, this is not, uh, 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 this is, you know, uh, a, a blockade in th that uh, 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 israel Saudi Arabia relationship. Uh, if Saudi Arabia plays important role for the settlement, I think um, it will be more possible and uh, meaningful. Right, uh, beginning, uh, Masood. Now, when we talk about the rule, uh, role of the United States uh, Secretary of State, Mr. Anthony Blinken, yeah. is in Israel, is assured. Now, the kind of statement is given before his departure to Israel that uh, the U.S. has got uh, Israel's back and we have their back today. Tomorrow, we'll have it every day. Now, earlier we had seen there were certain statements that actually criticized uh, Israel's regime's pursuit of Jewish settlement uh, in the West Bank and also uh, there was a little bit of tension regarding uh, the overhaul of the judiciary uh, over there in uh, Israel. Uh, how do you look at the difference now? You rightly pointed out, uh, Biden was previously, he was deadly against the Jewish settlements. And secondly, he was also against the judicial reforms which was being taken place be in Israel because judicial reforms was in the interest of Netanyahu. He was, he was being charged for criminal cases. So that's why he was trying to change the judiciary, uh, the, some of the clauses of the constitution. So that was the factor when the Americans was against this, uh, this uh, um, uh, judiciary reforms as, uh, at the same time the settlement. But now the issue has become as something of political as well as national interest of the United States. Because uh, the, the Biden administration, they are trying to show the, some of the, they were trying to show the achievements in the foreign policy. They were trying to get connect, connection between the Israelis and the Saudis at the same time. At the same time, this, uh, their secretary, national security, um, the national security advisor was in Libya and he was trying to persuade Libyans to also to recognize Israel. So they were trying to get political mileage out of these uh, basic uh, uh, understanding between the Saudis, Israelis and Libyans and Israelis at the same time. So that was the factor, but at the same time, no, he has taken a stand and that was the basically, the Biden has taken a stand, I said he saw rock solid behind Israelis and similarly today in the press conference, uh, Anthony Blinken, he said, uh, he never didn't mention Palestine, the human rights, uh, the innocent civilian in Gaza Strip, he said we are all out, we are supporting Israel, this carrier is here in the Mediterranean Sea, the more support is coming already, some has already arrived. So that is the international um, double standards. At the same time, look, in case of Ukraine, they are criticizing Russia. The Ukraine, according to them, Ukraine is fighting a Russian occupation. And here in this case, the Israelis are the, uh, the other way around. So that is basically double standards at the same time. Basically, everybody is f working for their own national interest. You just uh, uh, mentioned Russia. I'll yeah. come back to you, take uh, your detailed view regarding the offer of mediation by the Russian President Vladimir Putin on this particular conflict also. Mr. Navid, a shift uh, in the U.S. policy when it comes to its relations with Israel. Earlier we saw there were um, a statement criticizing Israel's plans of pursuit of Jewish settlements uh, in the West Bank. Also, uh, tension regarding the overhaul of the judiciary over there. Now, they're saying uh, the U.S. has got Israel's back. It has got it today. It will continue to have it tomorrow also. It is. You know, uh, it shows the intentions of the U.S. Um, U.S. Uh, seems to be more ambitious than Israel now. Israel is, is on the front, uh, front uh, you know, line. And... Uh, 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 U.S. has come to pat uh, Israel in this conflict and in this issue. Uh, this is, you know, a, a more ambitious uh, attitude of uh, America in, in the in, uh, Middle East. Uh, the Muslim countries or the Muslim world will have to come out to give message to America not to pat Israel uh, anymore, any longer in this issue. Otherwise, it will be a big tragedy and it will not end in, in, in uh, months. It will last for years. And if it lasts for months and months, it will be very difficult for Palestine or Hamas to handle it. 
because you know uh, they will be uh, facing uh, electricity issue, uh, water issue, uh, uh, food, uh, fuel, uh, hospitals, uh, many things are you know there to to consider. So it will be very difficult for Israel, uh, sorry, uh, for Palestine or for Hamas so to handle it. So, so uh, do you think uh, it would be only difficult for Hamas to handle it, or uh, if this particular conflict turns out to be uh, sp uh, uh, spreading into a wider region, wouldn't it be uh, uh, a difficult sort of a situation uh, for uh, Israel I itself it also? I think it will remain within uh, that region. And the focus of Israel is uh, at this stage only Palestine. So, how do, you, how do you think Muslim countries can impress upon the United States, in particular at this point in history, not to pat uh, the uh, Israelis and uh, take a more objective position regarding the conflict? Uh, diplomatically, is, uh, Muslim countries can uh, 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 put pressure on uh, uh, America and Israel. Uh, those Muslim countries who have acknowledged Israel as their uh, uh, um, uh, uh, partner countries, uh, they can also withdraw their uh, uh, diplomatic, uh, uh, you know, staff from Israel, or um, they can move uh, the Israel, Israeli staff uh, uh, from their country back to Israel. Uh, same attitude can be extended towards America. Uh, if you know diplomatic uh, uh, pressure is built. Uh, by the Muslim countries to America and Israel at the same time, uh, it can work, definitely. Right, Dr. Giri Masood, your take regarding that. Uh, do you think that is a doable uh, sort of a thing for Muslim countries to build a diplomatic pressure by uh, the way Mr. Aman has just suggested? Muslim countries, I, I said, uh, at least they haven't called a session of Arab League, they haven't called a session of OIC, so their seriousness we can see from there. Uh, there was a meeting. Uh, uh, on, on, the, on Tuesday, uh, it is the foreign scheduled. ministers of Arab League, and there is a statement by OIC. Yes, on, on Tuesday, it is I scheduled. There, I missed that. Mm. But still, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, the Tony Blinken must have discussed behind the doors, back door diplomacy, some options with the Israeli prime ministers, and subsequently now he is meeting the um, uh, Palestinian president in um, Jordan, and subsequently he is likely to visit uh, Egypt also. So likely, because that was the, in the press conference, he was trying to convince or the, he was uh, to the assu was assuring the Israeli population but because of their support, showing their sp American support. Subsequently, probably they will be behind the scenes. Do you they think uh, it is the love of Israel that has brought the Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, directly to Tel Aviv? Or is it because of its own interest? Because uh, 22 US citizens have been reportedly killed yeah. after this incursion by Hamas. 17 are still reportedly missing. Is it because of the concern regarding its own citizen? Or is it purely because of the love of Israel? Probably it is not the love or the citizen. It is basically I think both, 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 both are important. Political. Yes. It is more of political. As I said, they are trying to show because the American general population or the Congress or senators, they are mostly they are pro-Israel, and that and is and entire both, both election campaign of the President Biden depends on this issue now. So that's why they are demonstrating their uh, support and sending weapons and aircraft carrier and standing next by Israel. So that is a basically I think as a political move. Uh, at the same time, probably, um, I don't think so, uh, the world is going to buy as the Russians or the Chinese or at the same time they are also taking but, their... But you know, the important thing is that uh, they have shown uh, their concern about the casualties of their nationals in Israel uh, to just give impression to their nationals back in uh, US or in Great Britain or in, in uh, other countries of the world. Western countries in particular, Italy or France or Germany, uh, they are just showing that concern that we are very much concerned about our nationals, uh, whether they are in Israel or any part, uh, other part of the world. Uh, it is one of the aspects of this. Secondly, uh, Great Britain and America has their uh, very clear and direct interest in Israel. So they are uh, looking after their interest in Israel and favoring Israel against Palestine because Palestine is not uh, um, uh, fulfilling their uh, or uh, 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 
uh, is uh, you know uh, uh, taking care of their interest it is israel who is taking care of their in the interest in the region so so when we talk about uh, the hostages the captives uh, the foreign minister of israel says that uh, around 100 people uh, have been taken as captive by hamas the hamas spokesperson says that until the bombardment doesn't come to a halt there won't be document and he has rejected uh, negotiations regarding captives altogether looking at this statement by the energy minister of israel he says the bombardment will continue which country do you think can have uh, can has the maximum leverage when it comes to negotiations or at least start of the negotiations when it comes to release of those hostages and what likely could be a benefit for hamas what they would be looking for if they um, come to the negotiating table and promise to release those hostages definitely hamas will be looking for uh, uh, the talks re related to their territory to their uh, supremacy in their uh, region uh, their uh, rights uh, of uh, existence in their region uh, number one this is the major and most important uh, uh, objective which Hamas will, will be having. They would in, be able to get some territory back in return for those uh, held captives? I mean, they can demand it, they should demand it. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, it will not work. Uh, the captives are, uh, if uh, they are within uh, the uh, Hamas, uh, uh, you know, uh, clutches, uh, it will work until uh, it is, uh, you know, both of the parties come on the exchange of the captives. Uh, uh, we cannot find any way out. When they come out for the settlement, they will have to uh, hand over the captives to each side, to uh, one another, and find the way of uh, uh, of you know finding the peace in the region. Right, Brigadier uh, Masood, uh, what can Hamas get out of it if it comes to negotiating table and uh, promise to release those hostages? What should it be ideally looking for in return? Certainly, they will ask for the recognition of Hamas, one. Second, they are not going to get some land or any space that is very clear. The only thing is the basic demand of Hamas as rest of the Palestinian is to go back to the position of 1967 for creating a Palestinian state. So that is basic their demand at the same time. And then the atrocities at, at, uh, and the storming of uh, Al-Aqsa frequently that is also one of it, and the disrespect is, according to them, uh, shown by the Israeli troops while invading and storming the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Some of their demands are very valid, but I'm afraid. So uh, the possibility of going back to the 1967 not position? Not possible. No, not in, not in near future. Not possible because if that is done, the the, the government will fall in Israel. And likely, and I, as you, uh, was, I, I was uh, basically, I read in one of the articles in Hearts, they, they, they fixed the responsibility on Netanyahu for, annex, for his annexation and disposition policies, according to them, let the Israelis down. So they are very clear and they say, and subsequently, no, they have formed a unity government. And in the, according to them, you will see after some time that Jaho will be out of politics. He's in politics for the last 25 years, and he was prime minister, and he has been prime minister for 11 years. And one thing very important: in 2011, he was prime minister. There was one Israeli in the was in the custody of Hamas, so he has to release 1,027 Palestinians for one Israeli. So that is the importance of prisoners taken by the Hamas. So they understand the dynamics, how to mm -hmm. bargain the things in future. And then uh, Netanyahu's position, political position in Israel has uh, gone very down now. Uh, he is, I think, in, uh, as far as his political career is concerned, he has gone uh, on the bottom level of uh, his political uh, position in Israel uh, because of this attack. And uh, I, I don't think he will be in the position to, um, I mean, uh, regain his position, uh, position uh, in uh, Israel to, to satisfy the Israelis uh, uh, or justify his position in Israel. Right. Uh, <coughs> Adia, uh, we heard the name of Russia now. Vladimir Putin has offered mediations, urged the warring sides to turn to the negotiations. And he has also uh, held the belief that the creation of uh, the independent Palestinian state uh, 
uh, is the solution? To I don't think that uh, Russia, Russia's th this uh, offer will work because uh, Russia itself uh, uh, is not ready to go for the, uh, any sort of st settlement with uh, Ukraine. And Russia is asking for settlement in the Middle East. Uh, 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 th you know, the position is different. America can do it, yes. Uh, Saudi Arabia can do it. Uh, the, the workable or the doable, uh, the same th thing uh, depends upon the, the country or the personality who intervenes. Uh, if uh, Russia had done it in Ukraine, it, it would have done uh, again in Middle East by Russia. But now Russian position will not be entertained. Um, I think uh, American position is more stronger in, in the settlement of uh, uh, this issue in Middle East. Uh, right, Gary Masood, is Russia in a position to Certainly. offer such a mediation despite uh, the fact that it is itself involved in the Ukraine conflict? But at the same time, is a member of United Nations Security Council. Chinese are also there. This time, Americans, they failed to get a giant statement on the Palestinian issue. So therefore, they have the potentials with, along with China. So, so they can play an important role. And subsequently, and we have seen in the past, they have been pro-Middle uh, East countries, especially Syrians and the Iraqis, they have been in their block. So that is the factor. So they can, still they can, their presence is in Syria but that also. Was because, because uh, you know, the Ukraine issue was not there uh, when they were favoring Middle Eastern countries. Now they are involved in Ukrainian issue. Now their position is different. And so that is a very pertinent point, Brigadier Masood, Mr. Navid has just made. Uh, at that time, the Ukraine conflict wasn't there. So the position of Russia uh, was a lot different. Uh, and as and one more thing, uh, Jawad, is this? serious concern your take regarding that. But still, I think so, despite the fact, American has been, uh, they have been doing the same in the past. Uh, they, we see their history. And subsequently, they, all the powers, they are dicta okay. trying to dictate. So talking about the Security Council, yeah. uh, the emergency meeting held behind the closed doors earlier on Sunday. Now, uh, Brazil is once again called yeah. uh, a, a meeting that is to be held on Friday. Uh, no consensus, no unanimity of views, division in the United Nations Security Council in an earlier meeting. Do you expect any sort of a change this time around in this second meeting? I don't think so because Americans, they are basically, their stance are very different. Basically, they are trying to assert and they are trying to get a statement pro-Israel and Amer without naming or mentioning the, the Palestinians. So the Chinese as well as the, the Russians, they will try to include a thoughts, uh, something like ceasefire, some sort of deployment of some international peace force there, so, things like that. That may be possible, but it cannot be one-sided. If it is one-sided, then certainly they were going to veto it again. Jawad, yes. America wants to, uh, to linger on or to uh, continue this war. Uh, America doesn't want to um, to settle it uh, in the Middle East uh, as sooner as we wish or as it is the wish of So what purpose do you think does it serve for the U.S.? You know, the more the Middle Eastern countries or the Palestine is crushed, the more American interest and the uh, Israeli interest will be stronger and uh, their point of view will be stronger. And uh, one thing which is, uh, you know, we were discussing about the Security Council uh, uh, countries, uh, if we talk about uh, America, Britain or France, they have uh, um, uh, shown their, uh, you know, uh, sympathies to Israel. Uh, as far as Russia and uh, China are concerned, they have kept quiet for the, la uh, for the, uh, the first three days. They didn't give any statement in favor of Palestine. Uh, they didn't give in, uh, their statement in favor of Israel, but their favor was not also uh, uh, with the Palestine. They kept quiet and they uh, just uh, decided to uh, wait and see. Now, on the fifth day, uh, um, um, uh, Russia has given uh, you know very important statement for the settlement. Uh, China is still keeping quiet because you know China has its own way of politics and in, uh, they don't indulge themselves in the uh, okay, very uh, matters quickly, of uh, the other countries. Okay, very short of time. Uh, very quickly, last comments regarding the role of China. As we know earlier, uh, China facilitated uh, the talks between uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia, the restoration of diplomatic ties. Do you think uh, after today's talk between uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi Crown Prince and Iranian President, there is a likelihood or the possibility of a more uh, role China could play regarding resolving and addressing this conflict? Definitely. China 
Iran, Iran and Saudi Arabia can make the difference and can push America and the other uh, stakeholders uh, to bring Israel, Hamas on negotiation table and find the way out. I think these three countries, uh, the fourth one we can include Turkey. Uh, th th these four countries are very important to bring th th them on the negotiation table and find the so solution and settlement in the Middle East. That's right, Brigadier Masood, uh, what do you understand which side, the Western side is going to have a leverage this time around uh, when uh, it comes to addressing this conflict or is it uh, going to be uh, the uh, Eastern side which is going to have more It will leverage? be a combination. Both need. Certainly, American role is again important and beside the Arab countries as we mentioned, they can jointly, they can play a constructive role. Brigadier Retired Masood Ahmad Khan, senior analyst, joining us in the studio. Thank you very much for being with us in the show tonight. Really appreciate that. And Mr. Naveed Aman Khan, senior analyst, thank you very much for your time also for being with us on the show tonight. Really appreciate that. With that, we come to the end of today's episode. Thank you very much for being with us. <laughs>